Hello, I am Yeti and in this video, I'll be sharing with you the step-by-step -step process you need to apply for permanent residency in Canada and become a permanent resident. So basically, I'll be talking about the steps you need to immigrate to Canada through the Express Entry Program. So if you have ever thought about immigrating to Canada, then this video is exactly what you need. And by the end of this video, you should be able to do this application all by yourself without needing help from consultants or lawyers. But if you still choose to use the consultant or lawyer, that's fine. So if you're interested in this type of information, stick with this channel and make sure you subscribe because I share lots of information that will help you with your immigration journey. And So the very first thing you should do is get your international passport and I know this sounds extremely funny but what I realize is that people sometimes people actually do not get their passport beforehand until a few days ago I, ago I actually did not realize that there are people who did not have their passport so I was talking with someone who has always been talking to me about this process what can I do this this you know the person was talking to me and I'm like okay eh, okay the first thing you need to go and do this but you need to go with your passport and the person is like I don't have a passport I'm like you want to immigrate to Canada you don't have passport so please and please when you start thinking of this whole Canada thing the first thing you should be thinking about is get your international passport it is extremely important you cannot travel out of Nigeria or out of any country in the world without having an international passport. So get your passports, please. And the second thing you need to do is uh, get your credentials assessed. That's what I advise and what I recommend. And this credential assessment is actually used to verify the credibility of the degree, diploma or certificate that you're bringing from your country and verify that it's actually equivalent to a Canadian one. So Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, which is popularly known as IRCC, uh, do not do this credential assessment they, themselves. They have some bodies they've actually um, kind of assigned it to that does this um, credential assessment for them. The designated organizations that they have it's World Education Service, well, which is popularly known as WES. Uh, we have the International Credential Assessment Service of Canada, which is known as ICAS. And also there's the Comparative Education Services, CES. This one is affiliated to University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies. And also there's the International Qualifications Assessment Service, which is IQAS. And as well, we have the International Credential Evaluation Service, ICES. Aside from this, there are also professional bodies that actually authenticate and assess regulated occupations. They are also recognized as a step in the licensing process when you finally get here. So the designated bodies uh, that we have is the Medical Council of Canada, uh, which is called MCC, and also the Pharmacy Examining Board of Canada, PEBC. So usually it will cost you around $220 to $265 to actually uh, do this uh, credential assessment, but you're going to pay extra for courier services. If you need more in-depth information uh, to decide on which of these bodies you want to use, I'll put the link to them in the description box. So you can go there, just go straight to their website and find out the one you want to use. So this brings me to the third step, which is your language ability. And I would advise that you write this test after you've done your credential assessment or at least towards the end when you're sure that your assessment is going to be held soon because sometimes there could be a lot of delay with the credential assessment maybe due to um how late it is to get your transcript because for example i've met people who um took them almost a year to get their transcript sent from nigeria to the credential assessment body it might not be like that in your own country it could um, take less but uh, depending on your situation, I would say you should actually do your credential assessment first or at least start it before you actually think of doing your uh, language abilities test. So the major language in Canada is English and French. So you can get tested on either of the language or you can even choose to do both uh, of the language. But if you do both, then you will have to choose which one you want to actually use as your main language. So uh, usually you'll be tested on your writing your reading, your listening, and speaking. Because they want to make sure that you actually understand, you have a full grasp, grasp of, of the um, language that you're actually um, putting as your main language. And to measure how well you understand and speak English or French, uh, Canada uses a grading system called the Canadian Language Benchmark. Uh, that's for English. And for French, 
uh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce this. I'm going to put it on the screen. It's called NCLC. Uh, that's what they use to actually grade French. And on both of these uh, grading system, there are 12 benchmarks. And on both grading system, uh, 12 is the highest. So if you get 12, it means that your French or your English language skill is very strong or even close to being flawless. Well, if you get one, that's the lowest. So to qualify um, through the experience entry program, you need to get a minimum score of seven in all abilities. That's your speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So there are a couple of bodies that actually test people on their French or English language, but Canada has only approved two bodies for English and only one for French. So for English language, um, they use CELPIP. Uh, that's the Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program. And they also use IELTS, which is the International English Language Testing System. And for both, you have to take the general option. Don't take the academic or the general LS. IELTS is the most popular one because you can find it in any part of the world, really. Uh, anywhere you find a British Council, you would actually find it. And that's the one I actually did too, that I used to immigrate to Canada. So usually British Council coordinates it. So uh, to know the cost, you have to just visit their site. I know in Nigeria, for example, it costs about 79,000 Naira right now. While CELPIP is actually an exam being coordinated by Canada itself and it's geared towards just immigration programs. But I also have to note here that CELPIP is not available in all countries. Uh, it's only available in um, a few countries that I'm actually going to um, show on the screen right now. And if you're writing French, uh, you're going to do an exam called TEF. And for information on the French test, uh, you have to go to the French for Business website. Uh, they're the ones organizing it in all countries. So there you can find uh, the locations and the cost in different countries, as well as more information about the test. You'll find this um, on that website. So I'll put the link to this uh, in the description box. And also, if you're taking the French exam, I want you to note that this will give you additional points in the express entry. Don't tell anyone. French is what is giving people marks. Now you can actually get up to 50 extra points. So uh, if you can, it's a good way to boost your score when you actually get into the express entry pool. We're going to talk about that shortly. The next step is actually to know what your NOC is. At NOC is the National Occupation Classification System that Canada actually uses to decide what type of job you've done before or what your work experience was and does this meet the kind of skill they are looking for in this Federal Skilled Worker Program. So basically, the NOC classifies this job based on the duties you've performed before on your job and they also want to know the level you were at when you performed this job. Were you a manager? Were you a supervisor? What role were you in? For immigration purposes, the main job groups are skill 0, A, B, C and D. But for express entry program, your job and the work you've done in the past must be in skill type 0, A or B. Skill type 0 are management jobs. If you've been maybe operations manager, account manager, a managerial job. Skill level B are jobs that require a college diploma or training or a apprenticeship of some sort. That's what skill level B is all about. And once you confirm where your experience actually falls in, is it 0, is it A or B, the next step is for you to actually create your express entry profile on the IRCC website. Before you start your express entry uh, application, you want to make sure you're eligible and um, check your eligibility. Uh, I'm going to put a link um, to the video I've made earlier. Uh, I've talked about eligibility, how you calculate the score. The score is over 100 and all that good stuff. I'm going to put this, put this on the screen. So, like I said, make sure you subscribe. It's going to be for your own good. A lot of help on the immigration process on this channel. So, make sure you subscribe. So, uh, let's continue. Like I was saying, uh, the pool is where you're placed uh, with other eligible candidates. And is what people um, talk about, express entry pool. This is what I've been telling you. So, once you're in this express entry pool, IRCC would give you points based on several factors. It's going to be your age, your education, skills, experience. And if you have a spouse or partner and they are applying with you, uh, they also get points uh, for these factors I just mentioned. If they actually do their um, education assessment and also if they take the language test. So the scoring system in the express entry pool is what is referred to as a comprehensive ranking score. And your total points will be used to rank you in the express entry pool. And this total score, the ranking is what is called the CRA score. 
You can calculate your score uh, by using the comprehensive ranking score tool. I'll put the link in the description box. You can go there and check it. I'll also put that of the eligibility um, uh, factor tool as well. You can go. Uh, so, but once you start your Express Entry profile, you have 60 days to complete the profile. If you are unable to uh, submit within the 60 days or complete the profile, you would have to start again. So you want to make sure you have everything ready before you start that profile. But if you submit your profile within the 60 days, uh, then you need to be ready to accept invitation anytime. Because if you're one of the top ranking uh, people in the pool, for example, then Canada can just invite you to apply uh, to be a permanent resident. So, for example, if your score is 478 and Canada has actually chosen the cutoff score to be 4, uh, 456, it means you'll be selected uh, when the next round of invitation is issued. Uh, so this is what is actually called ITA, invitation to apply. So, but if your score is lower, uh, then you would have to be in the pool till your score actually uh, matches up to whatever the cutoff score is. While you're doing your credential assessment and English language test, there's nothing that stops you from trying to look for a job in Canada. Because if you get a job offer in Canada, be um, doing this process, you would actually get extra points. Once you've submitted your express entry profile and you rank high in the pool and you're called to apply, you're invited to apply, the next thing now is how you would complete the forms online and submit all the necessary documents. But I want to say you need to have started collecting these documents from day one. Don't, don't wait because the thing is the invitation to apply as a permanent resident is only valid for 90 days. So you want to make sure that you start filling out the online form from day one. And you can do this by um, signing into your account, the one you created for Express Entry initially. If you sign into it, you'll find the link that will actually take you um, to the permanent resident's um, uh, application for the express entry. So as soon as you fill these forms, uh, make sure you answer correctly and truthfully, please. Because if you are dishonest in that form and they catch you, they will ban you for five years. They can even cancel your document and they will ban you. So don't do that. Make sure you don't waste time in filling these forms. Uh, make sure you get all the documents you need. The first one, like I said, your international passport. Don't be like the, some people, I don't want to call their names, that don't have international passport and they are looking at traveling out of Nigeria. Then also, <laughs> I'm so sorry. And also, you need to have your digital passport taken. There will be a measurement. You can go to the um, IRCC website. There's a measurement that you need. You would also need your police certificate. The reference letter, make sure you're uh, getting reference letter for each and every experience you're claiming. So if you're saying you have um, uh, skills in 0, A, and B, make sure you have uh, letter, a reference letter showing this, uh, showing you have that skill in each of those areas. Uh, you would be asked to go and do medical examination. So um, there, there are places that have been assigned to actually do uh, medical exams by Canada uh, in each country. So you can find out out from IRCC website too. You can get where you can do your medical exam in your country. Proof of fund. This is really, really important. I'm going to put how much you need. Uh, to immigrate to Canada, I'll put it on the screen. So it's dependent on your family size. So how much one a single person needs is different from a family of two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's different. And this is one thing you want to make sure you are already getting together by the time you're starting this process because you'll be asked to actually submit six months worth of your statement because they want to make sure when you come here, you'll be able to settle down. You would not need any help or anything like that from the government. And you would actually also need best certificates for yourself, for your kids. Uh, if you have um, kids that are adopted, you also need to have their adoption certificates. But just know you need your best certificates. Uh, make sure the name on your best certificate tallies with your passport. Make sure everything tallies. Then uh, if you're married, you need to have your common law certificate or your marriage certificate as the case may be. You want to make sure you have that certificate. And like I said, your names must tally in all your documents. Of course, let's say if you've changed your name like myself, I had to also put uh, my change of name um, document, uh, the newspaper publication I did and all that. I had to put it there. And if you're divorced, you want to put your uh, divorce certificate or your separation certificate because they will ask you if you've been married before, if you're divorced and all that. It's part of the application form you feel. And um, if you have any of your family that are diseased or are late, they would also ask for their death certificate. They want you to put it there. 
um, so they know in case maybe their children or somebody related to them and related to you want to come to Canada. So you have to put that document there as well. And if you have somebody that is related to you in Canada, maybe um, your brother, your sister, your mom, grandparents, uh, who are related to you in Canada, you want to also be able to prove their relationship to you. You need to get the best certificate on both sides, prove it somehow that you guys are related. These are some of the compulsory ones I know they need. Uh, there could also be other documents that you might need, maybe to do some sort of explanation of what happened at one time or the other. And this is not the time to chip out on scanning. If you're scanning your document, make sure you're scanning real legible copies that are that anybody can actually read because any mistake in this document when you upload it if if they can't see if they can't see what you've uploaded they will return it and when they return it you will start again and once you've scanned and uploaded all your documents uh the system will automatically generate how much you're going to pay for the express entry i i have to pause this video now because i realized while i was editing the video i made i had over 30 minutes of video and that was because i was trying so much to explain everything in detail so if you've never had idea about how to actually do this process you can actually do it all by yourself uh, based on my explanation so the video went on for a little bit too long so what I've done now is I've split the video into two parts so the part you've just watched is the part A of the video and I'm gonna put the link up on the screen on the left or right somewhere I'm gonna put the link to the concluding part of the video I've also put the 30 minutes long video in my channel as well you can also watch that so if you have learned anything from this video today make sure you like my video and please subscribe and click on that notification bell so that anytime i have new videos you get notified thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video